أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of all the worlds the beneficent the merciful we testify that no one is worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger my brothers my esteemed sisters children assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi once again, we are coming to you live from the Islamic Institute of Toronto. I would like to once again thank you for inviting us into your homes. I have three things I want to bring to your attention today. The first one is that we are very pleased with the ceasefire that has happened in Palestine. And I want to thank the community for all the support. We've seen a tremendous amount of moral, financial, and spiritual support provided by the Muslim community, and to some extent, by the global community. However, the same cannot be said about our political leadership. With very few exceptions, the global leadership has once again resorted to political correctedness rather than standing up for what is truth and what is just. So once again, brothers and sisters, I would encourage you to please support the cause, donate, as much as you can, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to liberate the Palestinians and also the suffering of the Muslim Ummah all over the world. We know that our brothers and sisters in Uyghur, China, in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Yemen, in Kashmir, are all going through very difficult challenges. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve them and elevate their status. I also want to let you know that we are monitoring the reopening plans post COVID-19 and will continue to provide you with update as our plan progresses. I encourage you to keep checking our website, islam.ca. And while you are there, please register to receive our newsletter and keep checking the website for information about our programs. Inshallah, we will be starting this evening a program to reconnect you once again with Friday nights at Islamic Institute. This program tonight will be led by Dr. Sheikh Abdullah Hakim Quick and also will involve uh, Sheikh uh, Abdul Hamid. We will also have our sister Noor Javid, who is a journalist with the Toronto Star. So this, again, is meant to be an interactive program to connect you with the Islamic Institute. And we're hoping that you will find the time to join us this evening and every evening uh, during this pandemic at 7.30 on Friday for some spiritual upliftment and perhaps some issues that are in the public realm. I also finally would like to encourage you, if you are able, to please go on the website and make a donation to the Islamic Institute of Toronto. I will now invite our dear brother, Dr. Adal Hakim Quick, to deliver the khutbah. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibata Lil Muttaqeen Wala Udwana Illa Ala Dhalimeen Wa Ashadu An La Ilaha Illa Allah Wahtahu La Sharika Lah Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasooluh Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabi Wa Man Da'a Bi Da'watihi Wa Stanna Bi Sunnati Ila Yawm Al-Din Wa Sallam Tasliman Kathira Amma Ba'd فَأُوسِيكُمْ وَنَفْسِي بِالتَّقْوَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَاعَةِ وَيَقُولَ الْحَقِّ سُبْحَانَهُ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا All praise are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And surely the best reward ultimately is for those who have the consciousness of Allah. And surely there is no animosity except for the oppressor. And I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners. And that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his servant and his final messenger. May Allah always constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, his companions, and all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the Day of Judgment. As to what follows, I remind myself and you of the critical importance of taqwa, that we should hear the words of Allah, obey them, surround ourselves with the consciousness of the Creator. And Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us in His mighty book, O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He would repair your deeds, he would forgive your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has surely gained a mighty triumph. O oh, you who believe, Allah tells us, reminds us, encourages us with the idea of kolan sadida, and that is clarity in speech. And that is so important today in a world that has become foggy with information. And that clarity needs information. It needs connection with the revelation. And Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the last of the messengers who came to every nation and every tribe, has informed us in an authentic hadith reported by Abu Huraira, Yataqara bi zaman وَيَنْقُصُ الْعِلْمِ وَتَذْهَلُ الْفِتْنِ وَيُلْكِ الشُّحْ وَيَكْتُرُ الْحَرَجْ قِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَيُّ مَا هُوَ قَالَ الْقَتَلِ الْقَتَلِ The Prophet, peace be upon him, said in authentic hadith that time would pass by quickly and knowledge would decrease. And fitan, the plural of fitna, trials and tribula tribulations, would appear in the land, and greed would dominate people. And then Al-Haraj would appear, and they asked him, what is this Haraj? And he told them, killing, qatal, it is murder, it is genocide. And Sadaqa Rasulullah, these times have come about. And in this oft-repeated hadith, the recent happenings in the world with so many arenas where Muslims are dying and nobody cares about this, and even people of other religions, poorer people especially, we can see a connection in the different parts of this hadith. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, is showing us that there would be a decrease in knowledge, that people would not have sound knowledge of what is going on. And you would think that this would not be the times that we are living in because we have internet communications. But the knowledge is controlled. The knowledge is filtered. And many times what's happening on the ground is completely different than the reality that we are hearing in the media. And so the decrease in solid, true knowledge connected with the fitna, with the gray area trials and tribulations and temptations, that lead people to, to greed, where their greed blinds their eyes. 
And then killing happens. And this is the strange incident we are seeing as human beings. It's not natural for a person to see another person killed, whether the person be of their race or tribe or not. But somehow, because of our minds being twisted around, the fitna that is happening with media and information, that people watch children dying in Yemen, people watched over the, the, the news, people being bombed in Palestine, children dying, crying, screaming out, which if this happened to any person in his family, they would be enraged. But we find other individuals, some of them deluded people who thought they were right, arguing against the children, arguing against what is happening because of political correctness. And alhamdulillah, we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a ceasefire that has happened. We are thankful that innocent children are not being bombed and killed, infrastructure, communities being ruined. But at the same time, we must beware of distraction because this distraction is part of the fitna. And so we hear, no, the whole struggle is based upon militants. It's based upon one ethnic group fighting another ethnic group. But this is what we have to ask ourselves, and this is what our children need to learn. Our children need to learn what is the importance of Masjid al-Aqsa? What is the importance of the surrounding area around Jerusalem? Is al-Aqsa an Arab mosque? Is Jerusalem only the responsibility of the Palestinian people? No. Al-Aqsa, this sanctuary, is the only masjid mentioned in the Quran except for al-Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. It is of utmost importance in our religion. This is not a matter of ethnicity alone, although there is human rights being violated. But this long term is part of our faith. And every Muslim needs to understand the critical importance of Masjid al-Aqsa. In Surah Al-Isra, Surah Bani Israel, Allah tells us in the first verse, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa sami'u al-basir. Allah tells us, glory be to the one who took his servant, Muhammad, by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque of whose surroundings were blessed so that he may show him some of his signs. Surely Allah is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. This is a critical verse in the Quran for us to understand. This verse will be leading our consciousness right until the end of time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly shows the importance of Masjid al-Aqsa. And the fact which is overlooked by many, that the verse is saying, Alladhi barakna hawlahu, that around Masjid al-Aqsa, the surrounding lands is blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the signs that were shown in Masjid al-Aqsa the Prophet ﷺ was carried from Mecca to Jerusalem on the steed al-Buraq. He tied this animal up. He found an open area. The prophets appeared to him, many of the prophets. He led them in prayers. And it is from that area that he ascended al-Mi'raj. He ascended above seven heavens to a point where even Jibreel alayhi salam had to stop. He witnessed the presence of the Creator and he said there was a barrier of light that was in between him. And so Masjid al-Aqsa was of critical importance. 
And after the migration to Yathrib al Madina al Manawara, it became the first Qibla, the first direction of the believers for a period of time. Master al Aqsa, this sanctuary, this sacred, important area, is not just a building. It is an area of about 35 acres that includes the building that we call Masjid al-Aqsa, but the whole area is al-Haram al-Sharif. And the Prophet Sallallahu never forget that when he landed in this sacred area, he did not find a masjid built. He did not find the Qubbat al-Sakhra. He did not find the Golden Dome. It was Ard Fada, it was open area. He tied his burak to a wall. And this was a sacred land. So no matter what happens to the buildings, even if well, something physically happens to the buildings, it is still a sacred place to the Muslims. Because it was a sacred place in the beginning, and it is from this Qubba to Sahra, this is the place where he ascended. The masjid we know as Masjid al-Aqsa is actually al-Masjid al-Qibli. It is the masjid that shows the direction going to Mecca. And this structure was built by the Umayyad Khalifa Abdul Malik ibn Merwan between 688 and 691. But the reality is, never forget the whole area, that 35-acre area, all of it is al-Masjid al-Haram. Al-Masjid al-Aqsa. And so when prayer is made on Juma in the Masjid al-Qibli, in the front part that they now say Masjid al-Aqsa, people extend back past the Dome of the Rock. Many times the women pray in the Dome of the Rock structure. And further sometimes on Eid days and other days, all the way into the courtyards because all of the area is part of the sanctuary of this sacred space. A space that was built not in the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, but a space that was built according to our Prophet Sallallahu 40 years after Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. Many scholars say that the foundations of this masjid were put down by Adam alayhi salam. And many say that it was really completed, the building of it was Ibrahim. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So this is an issue which is beyond one ethnic tribe versus another. This is an issue that connects all of the prophets. And it is of critical importance to believers. And never forget that after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the Romans attacked from the north. These are the people who had destroyed much of Jerusalem refused to allow the Jewish people to pray. They attacked the Muslims. The Muslims responded. And alhamdulillah, the masjid area was liberated. The masjid was opened up. And it is reported that a new rule was established. This is a prophetic rule of the sacred area that connects all of the prophets and their followers. And so therefore, when the Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab was called to Jerusalem to receive the keys of the city from the Christian patriarch, he received the keys to the city and he built a small masjid in the area with a wall where the Prophet ﷺ had tied the burak. A small masjid was built there that could only fit 3,000 people. But the whole sanctuary, the whole area is considered to be a sacred space. And Umar ibn Khattab عن, established an important, an important waqaf he established a trust, and he established rules. It was called the Treaty of Umar, 
and the patriarch Sophronianus. And in this treaty, freedom of worship was allowed for the Christians. Freedom of worship was allowed for the Jewish people. Freedom of worship was allowed for the believers, for the Muslims. But the duty that was placed upon the Ummah from the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, is that the Muslim Ummah would be responsible for this area, would be responsible to maintain the sacredness of this area, the peace and the sanctity. Not like the Babylonian rule, where the temples of the Jewish people were destroyed. Not like the Roman rule, where they were not allowed to pray. But the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where all of the believers are allowed to worship in their own way, where peace and justice rules the land. This is the land that is blessed. And when we understand this, we can see that not only in areas like Sheikh Jarrah, where people are being thrown out of their homes, and expelled right in East Jerusalem. This is sacred area, not just because of the human rights being violated, but realize that the name Sheikh Jarrah comes from Hussam, Hussam al-Din al-Jarahi, who was the personal doctor of Sultan Salah al-Din al-Ayubi, rahimahullah. And so this area was named after the physician of Salah al-Din, and so when it is violated, it is violating our faith, our history. It is violating the peace. Salah al established peace. He did not torture and punish the Christians. He did not torture and punish the Jewish people. But he allowed the faiths to be established. And he continued the wasiyah. He continued the inheritance of Umar ibn Khattab dating back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never let us forget about the sanctity and importance of Masjid al-Aqsa. Never forget. For this will be the land, if we study our signs, the lands of major signs going toward the Day of Judgment. The rise of the Mahdi, the rise of the Antichrist Dajjal, the major wars, people being raised out of their graves on Qiyamah. It is in this area, Bilad al-Sham, this blessed area, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable human beings to maintain the peace and sanctity of this area. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable the Muslims to stand with the duties assigned to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah raise up leadership in our Muslim world to take us from darkness into light. And may Allah bless all those whose lives, lives have been lost. All of those children, may Allah give them hope. May Allah give them peace. I leave you with these thoughts, and I ask Allah to have mercy on me and you. Aqulu qali hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa li sa'iri muslimina min kulli dham bin istaghfiru innahu hu ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, al-wahid al-ahad, al-fadd al-samad, al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Wa usalli wa usallam ala sayyid al-awwaleen wal akhirin, nabiyyana Muhammadan, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, wa ba'd. Fa ya ibadullah, attakullah haythu ma kuntum, wa yuqul al-haq subhana, mukhbiran wa amira. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ورد الله عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبو بكر عمر عثمان وعلي وعنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتري لولا أهدانا الله ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع ربنا 
اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قديته ولا مريدا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من هوايج الدنيا إلا قديتها يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله